Survivor is a show we watch for many reasons, whether it's for the blind sides, the challenges, the social dynamics, or the general iconic moments to come from the best reality television show ever created. But that's just the thing, this is reality TV, real people being filmed for millions of others to watch, and since this is reality TV, we get a lot of real and unscripted moments. And while many of these moments can be funny or entertaining, we also get some extremely sad moments from Survivor that have brought tears to the eyes of the fans watching at home. What's going on guys, I'm Flint Masters, and today, we'll be looking at the saddest moments in Survivor throughout its 22 year history. This won't be a specific countdown list as counting down sad moments doesn't really feel right, but I will divide up these sad moments into specific sections, those being saddest vote offs, evacuations, and general sad moments. Before we begin, don't forget to smash that subscribe button for weekly Survivor content. With that said, let's begin with the status medical evacuations. Medical evacuations are always brutal. Imagine going on Survivor, a dream come true for many players, and you're forced to leave the game through no fault of your own, as the elements, or in some cases, a freak accident accident did your body in. There's no better example of this than Pat and Survivor David vs Goliath. Pat literally inspired the theme of that season, as Jeff in production loved his story. And Pat's no-nonsense hard work attitude was extremely prevalent in the premiere of season 37. But Pat's Survivor experience would end far too soon, simply because he was sitting on the wrong part of the boat, and the Fiji ocean waves were a bit too strong that day. You can't see. It's okay. It's okay. Nice, slow, deep breath. Don't worry, okay. We got you, man. Squeeze, mate. We got a flat surface. Feel a little bit of a cold sensation going up your arm, okay, buddy? Where am I? I'm scared. Don't worry, you can focus on me. Just take nice, deep breath. You're doing fine. We're going to have to get into the hospital to get the right scans to make sure there's no serious damage. Not this way. Just can't be the thing that goes. Brother, I'm afraid there is no other choice. We have to look out for you, Pat. That's the number one job of our medical team is to take care of you. Be strong. One, two, three, three. Not lazy. I hope he knows how much we love him, and I hope that he still is grateful for this experience because we're grateful for him. Okay, we need to go up, further up. We love you, Pat! We love you, Pat! Stay strong! Just absolutely brutal to see a man who's battled through so much in life finally have all that hard work pay off, only for it to end in the most heartbreaking of ways. We've had some other pretty sad evacuations throughout the years as well, but in my opinion, the saddest one ever is Jonathan's in Survivor Micronesia. Jonathan had appeared to learn from his mistakes socially wise from the Cook Islands and was ready to make a deep run in his second outing. But his second chance ended due to a freaking random knee scrape and the realization begins to set in that this might be it for him in Survivor. An infection that goes into your bloodstream is potentially fatal. Ah, God. Okay. No way. So this isn't even a case of another afternoon, I'll come check you later today. I can only recommend, for the sake of his leg and his life, that he leaves the game now. He needs hospital treatment. It's not going to get better, it will just get worse. Jonathan, you guys take care of you. We need you. We need you. I need you. I'm sorry. I know. Okay. Have fun, guys. I'll see you at the reunion. I was kicking ass in this game. I swear to God. I couldn't have tried any better. I couldn't have fought any harder. It's fun while it lasted. It's just so crazy to see a charismatic, villainous player like Jonathan be brought to tears, which is what makes this evacuation stand out from the rest. While the next two players didn't leave due to any medical reasons, Jenna and Terry both had to leave Survivor to go back home to be with their family members who were in critical condition. Again, on Survivor, you have no idea what is happening in the real world, and that includes what is happening with your family. I can't imagine playing the relentless game of Survivor only to be told that something had happened to someone close to me back home. Jenna realized it was a mistake to come onto Survivor her days into All Stars and went back home to be with her ailing mother before she passed. I can't play too much of the clip due to copyright, but all I can say is this is easily the saddest music Survivor has ever produced. I mean, holy cow. Let's bring in a boat.
While Jenna knew of the risk, Terry was completely blindsided to hear about his son's heart condition that put him in the hospital. I just got a phone call from your wife. And your son, Dan, he's in the hospital. Both your wife and the doctor think that it's serious enough that you should go home to be involved. My boy, Danny, yeah. he uh, ended up being hospitalized. Yeah. And uh, my wife and the doctor think that it's best that I go home. Oh, my and for, for me, there was, there, was, there was no choice. Right. But, um, I think you have to be a parent to understand how devastating it would be to be out here and get a call that your child is sick and you need to get home. I just can't imagine. It turns out my son Danny needed a heart transplant and he got that transplant and he's doing well. And here I was thinking I was the second chance guy. Our second chance survivor is right here. You know this is a sad moment when even Chaos Cast is holding back the tears. Seeing our favorites getting voted out sucks. And recently, Survivor has given special emotional music to our favorite Survivor players when their torches are snuffed. Christian, the tribe has spoken. But there's emotional, and then there's flat out heartbreaking vote offs. And these are the ones that have broken the most hearts in the Survivor community. The first true sad vote off in Survivor comes from All Stars, where Rudy is voted out due to his ankle injury and old age making him a weak link on Saboka. Rudy was the first true hero of Survivor, and to see him leave due to Father Time catching up on the Navy veteran not only left the fans at home teary eyed, but even the players voting him out couldn't hold back the tears. Second person voted out of the Saboka tribe Rudy. Need to bring me a torch. Ready? The tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. How could you not like Rudy? 75 year old, former Navy SEAL, hanging with kids a third of his age, a hero in anybody's book. I know you didn't want to vote him out, and yet somebody had to go, which is exactly what makes Survivor what it is, complicated. We then had Amy in Survivor Micronesia fight for her life at the penultimate tribal before the merge. Amy was no longer in the dominant position she had been in her original season of Vanuatu, and her chance to take over the game went up in smoke after Chet quit. If she could just get to the merge, then maybe that would be the break she needed to reset her game and be the dominant Amy we all know and love. But at tribal, she quickly realizes she's going home and there's nothing she can really do about it. Probably the most helpless feeling a Survivor player can have, especially when it's happening to a player like Amy. Amy. Why should this tribe believe your story? I'm going to set aside all the past of where I voted and what I've done and all that. They know where I'm coming from. The biggest thing is, is my heart is in this. I want to fight for this tribe. I want to stick together. I don't want to go out now. We have so much more that we can conquer together. I want to fight as hard as I can in every challenge. I want to keep Parvati in. I want to keep James in. I even want to keep Eliza in. I want to be here. I swear, I'll give you everything I have. Eighth person voted out of Survivor fan versus favorites. Amy. That's three. That's enough. You need to bring me a torch. Amy, the tribe has spoken. Time for you to go. Good luck, you guys. In Survivor Panama, we got the heartbreaking vote off of Tina. Now, to be fair, I think we can all agree that Tina going home here over Suri was the best thing to happen to Survivor in the long run. But still, that doesn't make this vote off any less heartbreaking. Tina's son passed away just before Panama, and she played this game to honor him. So, it must have been that much more deflating to be the first boot, which is already a tough enough pill to swallow. I wrote this in the sand for my son, Charlie, who was killed in a car accident. You know, four and a half months ago, and he was just 16 years old, and he was my only child. So, I will come and talk to him once in a while. Alone. First person voted out of Survivor Exile Island. Tina, need to bring me a torch. Tina, the tribe has spoken. 
To make the situation even more sad, Tina was originally supposed to be on Guatemala, but was pushed back to Panama due to her son's death. We'll never know, but you gotta believe Tina would have fared better on Guatemala, especially considering we saw someone like Lydia make it to the final four that season. Spoiler alert now for Australian Survivor, as we'll be talking about without question, the saddest vote off in the franchise's history. Unfortunately, due to Australian Survivor's awful editing, it's hard to feel connected to any of its players, but there's probably not a player in Australian Survivor that's more beloved than Luke Talkie. AU Survivor's first returning player, as he was Liddy the People's Champion, Luke's bubbly personality combined with his hard-fought gameplay made him far and away the fan favorite of Australian Survivor 2017. And when he came back a second time for Champions vs. Contenders 2, he played even better, making it all the way to the Final Four. Unfortunately, after losing the Final Four immunity challenge and being told by Baden and Harry that they were voting for him, his last hope was Pia. Again, I can't play too much of this clip due to copyright, but all I can say is, this episode and vote off as a whole was literally like watching your dog being put to sleep. Two votes Luke, one vote Baden, one vote left. 21st person voted out of Australian Survivor, 8th member of our jury. <laughs> Luke, the tribe has spoken. What a day. Seriously, I can't express this enough. You simply have to watch Luke's two seasons to truly feel the emotions of this moment. The fact that a GoFundMe page raised more money for him than the actual prize money for AU Survivor should tell you all you need to know about how Survivor fans down under view Luke Kotaki. But in my opinion, the saddest vote off in Survivor history comes from Micronesia, this time involving the one and only Sari Fields. Man, I didn't realize how much of a tearjerker Micronesia was. My god. Suri is truly the epitome of a beloved Survivor player, as both the casual and hardcore fans loved her in Panama. And seeing her come back to play an even more ruthless game in Fans vs. Favorites was even better. As a late 30s couch potato, blindsiding a bunch of strong guys is exactly what makes Survivor such compelling TV. And after the iconic blindside of Eric, Suri was all but guaranteed the win, as she wins any Final 3 scenario against the Black Widow Brigade. But due to Kathy quitting and James and Jonathan's evacuations, this forced Survivor to expand the schedule and make the season a final two instead of a final three like it was originally supposed to be. But that's okay, as if there was one challenge Suri could win, it would be a challenge designed for a nurse. Besides, there's no better way to win Survivor than to close it out with a final immunity challenge victory. Suri loses her concentration. Amanda wins final immunity and is guaranteed a spot at the final travel council. Man, that still hurts to this day. And at a heartbreaking tribal council, Amanda writes down Suri's name as she knew she had no choice but to vote out the amazing Suri Fields. And if there is ever a time to shut off the video to avoid being depressed for the rest of the day, now would be the time to do so. 15th person voted out and the eighth and final member of our jury. Suri, need to bring your torch. It's okay. Suri? Drive has spoken. Time for you to go. Here I am again, coming up just short. HB, John, Jamil, Jared, Mom, Dad. Sorry, I tried my hardest. Just wasn't meant to be.
Let's finish off the video with some general stab moments. I debated on whether to include the Varner Zeke and Kelly Dan incidents, but I decided against it, as those moments are more ugly than anything, and don't need to be brought back up again. However, from the Kelly and Dan incident, we of course got the lovely Janet, trying to protect the young woman, that were calling on her for help, only for everyone to turn on her for doing the right thing. And not only that, but Janet almost overcame it all, but came up just short of the win due to a freaking coin flip. Sums up the depressing nature of Island of the Idols to a T. But Jeff, I just want to make it clear, this was a survivor play that went wrong for Janet. I disagree. No, if that's you ridiculous. know anything about it, I, you I would not of, be I know a lot about it. I okay. know a lot about it. Right. A lot. And what's happening now is that the victim role is being assumed by Janet, and she's now, instead of taking responsibility for being on the wrong side of the numbers, is trying to spin this into something that could potentially affect the life of Dan. Janet, how are you feeling right now? I'm trying to decide if I should stay. In the game? All I ever wanted to do was play this game like everybody else. Never would I have wanted to create a problem with this platform. I feel the hatred. I feel so alone. This is a hidden immunity idol. And this is the idol nullifier. This nullifier was played against Janet. 16th person voted out. Janet, that's three, that's enough. Need to bring me your torch. Amazing job, Mama. Well done. Janet, the chopper's spoken. Hi, Jeff, thank you. Thank you. Bye, Janet. Bye, Janet. Bye, guys. See you later. I allowed myself to get really hopeful because I was so close to having a possible dream come true. I feel really naive and stupid to think that I allowed myself to go further in my head that I had it. But I'm proud of the game I played just because it's who I am. Say what you will about Survivor 41, as the first season of the new era definitely had the fanbase divided. One of the main things that was questioned was the all-black alliance formed in the post-merge. We saw the same thing happen in Big Brother with the cookout, and while some fans understand it, given the year that was 2020, and the bad representation of blacks on reality TV throughout the years, other fans thought it was hypocritical to form an alliance solely based on race. In Big Brother, we saw players like Tiffany and Aza tank their own games in order to get the first black winner in BB history. At the final eight of Survivor 41, Deshaun was in a similar spot to the the players of the cookout. He could easily continue to side with the Black Alliance and all but guarantee a Black winner at that point. However, he knew that Shan was his biggest competition and she had Liana locked by her side. This left Deshaun in a tough spot and frankly, a spot that he couldn't handle as he could either play for the Black community or turn on the community to have his own dream of winning Survivor come true. Last night when I spoke to Erica, the plan was we were going to try to get Shan out of the game. But then I had some talks with her and I really do feel like coming into this game if there were going to be black players here that I wanted to play with them. There's like that duality, like, like, hold on for a second. The people before is just so much for us to be here. And the year that we just had, 2020, was, it was rough, bro. It was rough. And you get this opportunity the opportunity you always wanted, and you feel like the number one person standing in your way is your biggest supporter and your biggest ally and the biggest person that you said, like, you would never turn against in this game because, like, it's just hard because I don't want to turn my back on any of the three of them, but, like, I, what am I going to do for myself? What do I do? Again, no matter what your take is on the Cookout Alliance of Survivor, you can't deny that everything leading up to Shan's blindside made for one of the greatest episodes in modern Survivor. Let's finish it off with a moment that pulls at the heartstrings of even the toughest of people out there. 
Adam went out to play season 33 of Survivor, knowing his mom was at home in critical condition, and despite some ups and downs, he was ultimately in the majority alliance, taking out Jay's minority alliance. And not only were these two in separate alliances, but they were polar opposite personalities as well. Jay was a joyful, carefree surfer bro, while Adam was a hardcore super fan who analyzed everything about the game. Yet, despite the two playing against each other and having opposite views on life, they were able to bond over something very dear to their hearts, as Jay's mother was also very sick. Can I tell you something that I haven't told anyone in this game? What? My mom has stage four lung cancer. <laughs> and she's already been through three treatments. And I found out when my brother came that the third one isn't working either. That's why he's been so much to me. I'm doing it for her. I've been scared for the past nine years when my mom's gonna die, bro. I'm so scared. I love my mom just like he does. And it's crazy, cause like, my mom's got brain aneurysms. Me and Adam are both out here for our families, for our moms. He's not a weasel in my book anymore. He's a good freaking dude, he's a warrior. Just an awesome moment and everything great about Survivor. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope the tears aren't falling too much. I know your eyes might be a bit blurry, but if you can, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more awesome Survivor content like this. And let me know in the comments what you think the saddest moment in Survivor history is. With all that said, thanks once again, guys, and I'll see you next time.